Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Steve, and today I've got a slightly different video than what I'm used to putting out. This is more of a first impressions slash response to uh, the Brick Watch Company and Dave Portnoy. Now, I reached out to Dave when he first announced his uh, company on his Instagram, and I mean, to the surprise of no one, I got a no response, which is fine. I mean, it's Dave Portnoy and I'm some dude in his basement. Not a big deal, whatever. I sent out, I expressed interest in his brand because I'm super excited to see what people put out. I myself did start my own brand. Uh, base time pieces is actually what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the FD1. So that brand did not necessarily kick off the way we intended it to go, but I digress. I have some sort of experience in this market. And so I thought it would be fair for me to review, not necessarily review, but do a first impression of his watch. And then he posted a video on his Instagram where he calls out all of the haters, the watch snobs, the watch nerds, bashing his watch, calling it a cheap $40 watch from China. And he just goes in hard. And <laughs> I get it, you wanna defend your brand and everything, but we're gonna dissect that video later on. First, let's go ahead and look at the Brick Watch Company website and we can go through and get a better feeling of both watches. So we pulled the website here and we have this splash page with the chronographs that he has for sale at the top. And we scroll down and we come to this Brick Watch Company blurb here. I'm not gonna read the entire thing, but I wanna point out this little excerpt right here. And it says, a watch for people like myself who can afford a Rolex, but don't need a status symbol on their wrist to do the talking for them. And that really is a, a weird stance to take because if you're just solely in the market to buy a watch and you can afford a Rolex, you'd buy a Rolex or a Breitling or an Omega or a Cartier, something that is a status symbol. That's why you're buying that watch, not necessarily because you like the specs of it. But I think it's a little bit weird to like say, yeah, I could afford a Rolex, but I decided to spend my money elsewhere because X, Y, and Z, when at the end of the day, you just wanted the Rolex. Whatever, that's neither here nor there. Let's go ahead and continue with the website. So then we scroll down and we can see the Classic 22 and all of its various uh, offerings here. We got blue dials, salmon dials, black dials, silver dials, white dials with different uh, colors of numerals throughout. And then we go down, we can see photos looking pretty nifty. And then we come down here to the Chrono Diver 22. So I'm assuming, I don't know if it's even a diver, but it says Chrono Diver 22 and the same offerings in terms of dial variation. And we have a few pictures here. All right, looking nice. Let's go ahead and um, let's go to the Brick Watch Foundation. The Brick Watch Company does do something that I haven't seen many brands do, and it will donate 20% of the proceeds on every watch sold to small businesses through the Brick Watch Foundation, which is great. I really like that message, and I can appreciate Dave doing that, taking proceeds out, taking profits out of his watch to go to this, which, hey, I'm all for it. People helping people, I love it. Let's go ahead and do, I like the silver case, navy dial, white numbers. And the biggest thing that people are gonna see right off the bat is that it's $2,400. And you have to think about that in the perspective of watches. If you're in the market for a watch and you're willing to spend $2,400, there's not a lot of people out there that were willing to part with that money, right? I mean, if you have money, and uh, you know you make six figures, this, that, and the other, $2,400 is still $2,400. You understand the value of a dollar. And if you don't have money, and say you, you know, you're working minimum wage, there's no way you're gonna be able to afford a $2,400 watch. So I really don't get where the customer is in this space, right? I mean, because if we look down, we look at the specs, the case and bracelet are just your standard 316L stainless steel. The movement is a Ronda StarTech 5040.D Swiss quartz movement, sapphire crystal, 100 meters of water resistance, and it goes into your basic functions of the watch. And here, I would expect at this price range to be a mechanical movement. Um, quartz movements are a dime a dozen. You can buy them off the shelf like crazy. And I think this is why people are giving him a lot of flack. In his video, which we'll dissect later, 
he talks about people saying that the watch is only 40 bucks. While the watch itself isn't $40, the movement in this particular watch is 40 bucks. You know, like you can't argue that. That's why I think the $40 came in. It's not necessarily the entire watch itself costs 40 bucks, but that specific movement, if you were gonna go buy it from a watch supply store, would cost you $40. I think that's why everyone is up in arms at this point. And as you can see by this image right here, it does have mechanical movement. One thing I don't like is that these are just renders. These are just 3D renders. You really don't get any actual product photo. So right here, I came and tell if these are gonna be screw pins, are these gonna be push pins? I have no clue. But here's the dial itself. It looks pretty basic and pretty standard. Like I said, it's not really any product photos. These are just renderings. So it's kind of hard to tell. We don't know how the loom is or anything like that based on the photos presented. Let's go ahead and scroll down. Oh, I guess it comes in two sizes, 38 and 42 millimeter. We scroll down here, it comes with the Salita SW200. 100 meters of water resistance as well, 26 joules. Same basic things. I guess the crystal does have UV coating on it. Now, if you're into watches, you already know that these are very overpriced timepieces. But if you're not that knowledgeable on the uh, watch front, let's go ahead and give you some comps. But before we do that, let's go ahead and see what makes Brick Watch Company special. Brick Watch Company is proud to be an American manufacturer of watches and timepieces. Watches designed, engineered, and built in the United States. We use Swiss and imported parts where necessary to ensure the highest watchmaking standards. And then we have you know, attention to detail, and we talk about stainless steel and why it's you know used, and the sapphire crystal. So there's a lot of things that if you're not a watch guy or gal, you wouldn't know. You're like, okay, that sounds good. But there's plenty of watch companies that do this already. And one very close comp, at least in my mind, is Shinola. So let's go ahead and take a look at Shinola. So this is the Vinton, which is, you know, your blue dial, stainless steel, uh, three-hander with a date, 38 millimeters coming in at about $600. Oh, look, you even got engraving available. Coming in at $600, this one is quartz, um, but the specs are pretty similar. They do have the sapphire crystal, uh, like I said, the Argonite 715, which is basically a Ronda movement. Um, uh, yeah, the water resistance is 50 compared to the 100 on the Brick Watch Company watch, but uh, overall, pretty, pretty, this, you know, pretty identical. Not gonna lie, it's it's the same thing. If you want something else, um, something automatic. You have the Lake Superior Monster. This is a 43 millimeter. This is a diver. This is actually a pretty good diver. I've had one of their divers in the past. Stainless steel bracelet, black dial, nice bold numerals. This one comes with the SW200 movement with that custom rotor. And um, yeah, same exact thing here. Details, 43 millimeters. Uh, bit of a chunky watch, 15 millimeters and 300 meters of water resistance. Now I understand that this is a dive watch and it's not the same thing as your everyday watch, but since they do have the same movement, you can see that for $900 less, you can get the Shinola and on top of that, get the Vinton as well. So that's taken care of the everyday dress watch. Now let's take a look at the chronograph. So here we have the Traveler 42 millimeter, $850. And similar movement, the Argonite 5021.D, so it's not the 504, but something similar, still high accuracy quartz movement, uh, stainless steel case, uh, wood box, everything like that. I believe you still get um, a sapphire crystal, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see it here unless I'm blind, which I probably am, it doesn't say anything. Now looking over at the Runwell chronograph, $800 again. The 5021 chronograph movement with the date, everything like that. Does come with a screw down crown, 100 meters water resistance, double dome sapphire crystal. And now if you even wanted to get sportier, they do offer a GMT model. And this is the Monster GMT Automatic, $2,000. I think this is one of the most expensive watches they have. But basically the same thing as the other Monster. Now I know this might seem like I'm just promoting Shinola, but I'm not, I'm just showing you what you can get for your money. 
and why I think the $2,400 is just way overpriced for what you're getting. Now that we got that out of the way, I really wanna talk about this video that Dave posted on his Instagram. It's really funny. So let's go ahead and uh, give that a listen. Okay, Mercy press conference time, Brick Watch. There's 38 Classic, go buy some, the greatest Christmas gift you could ever get, or a Hanukkah bush uh, for that special somebody. I love how much of a salesman he is. He's really good at selling, not gonna lie. He's very entertaining. I love his pizza reviews. Very entertaining guy, 100%. But his watch is, I don't know, let's get into it. I guess there's watch hardos, watch nerds, watch dorks, and then just Dave Portnoy haters. And they come together for this fucking volcano of hate. <laughs> watch hardos, watch nerds, watch dorks. I love it. Like this guy, well, well I, yeah, I start taking notes. I'm, I'm writing down names. I almost gonna be like, buddy, enjoy your last couple moments of just trashing me because the beast is waking up and he's waking up today. Derek Guy, Die Workwear, he's out there. This is like a men's editor. He works for like Washington Post or something. I saw Feidelberg follow him. He's out there saying, my watches cost me $40, 40, two twenties, and I'm selling them for 2400 Oh yeah, the watch doesn't cost 40 bucks. The movement, uh, the quartz movement costs 40 bucks. The Salita SW200 probably cost a uh, buck 80, something like that. There is a lot of money that goes into developing, designing, and if you don't have those members on your team already, you're gonna have to outsource all those. So uh, it, it, there's no way that the watch costs $42. In my opinion, I'm pretty sure the watch costs somewhere around $400 to make. I, that's just me ballparking. Um, once again, I mean, base timepieces, that's what we made. But just going off of what we came up with and what we uh, got our prices on, I would probably, and I guess making that into an American market, probably closer to that $400, $500 mark after everything's all said and done, but definitely not 40 bucks. $40? I can't wipe my ass for $40. <laughs> can't wipe his, what does he get? Like quadruple ply toilet paper? What would make you think me, who's got pretty high class taste if you follow anything I do, is making a $40 watch? People think I'm that desperate for fucking money? Buddy, I got a hundred million in the bank. Buddy, I've got like 20 bucks in the bank. I, I guess people may well show how much they are. I'm not showing the exact amount. No watch company did that. I spent months trying to find out what markers are, how much they cost, all that shit. Uh, yeah, you don't need to give out how much your unit price is per watch or anything like that. You maybe you should have spent more time looking at comps, but whatever. I mean, that's neither here nor there. Somebody who is considering themselves like an internet sleuth is like, oh my God, Dave didn't make the watches. He hired a company to make the watches for him. Uh, no doy, as the kids say in the street. <laughs> no doy? Um, I don't know if it's like that. I'm pretty sure they're just going off of the movement, but yeah, I mean, that's where I would get the $40 from if I uh, had to take a guess. Newsflash, I don't know how to make watches. I had to hire a company to make my watches. Now, there seems to be a feeling like I walked into a showroom or something and they had all these watches, I'll take those, pre-made and just slap my logo on it. I told you this took me years from when I came up with the concept all the way to the launch till this thing was ready. You wanna see the invoice? Like I don't wanna say how much you say, I said I spent millions. And I can 100% attest to this, it takes a while to get a design down, to hammer out all the small details. It's not easy. You can't just go up and just be like, yeah, I want one of those. I want one of those. Give me get a batch of those. It's not like that. Uh, there are companies that do that, you know, drop shipping, things of that nature. But if you're going to sit there and design a watch, yeah, I, mean, I don't personally like, whoa, easy there. I personally don't like the look of the Brick Watch Company watches. I think they're very basic and they don't look any better than a Timex or anything like that. It's not for me, the design, I wouldn't buy it, but I mean, maybe someone out there really likes the design or really likes Dave or really likes anything. But to say that he just went up to a store and just said, uh, uh, yeah, let me just get, you know, 10,000 of these bad boys. I, yeah, I don't believe that at all. You don't know how many watches I bought. You don't know my inventory. You think this invoice one, $820,000. There's four of those, okay? Do the math. 
what, 3.7, 3.8? It went up because I kept adding to, you think I spent $3.8 million on watches from China or Alibaba or watches that are sitting around that I just put my name on for $40? I didn't can't even do the math. I want to say like about 7,000 watches. Maybe 7,000, maybe I'm off, maybe I'm off. Maybe closer to 6,000 watches, but somewhere around there. How many watches would that be? <laughs> 95,000 watches. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's moving 95,000 watches. I was in every step of the design process of these watches. I hired, I went around, found companies that I thought could do it, put them against, and came up with a company in the United States that could make the watches. People found the return address? Yeah, because I got a three-year warranty on the, war, uh, on the watches. So if for some reason it doesn't work, you get it fixed for free. So they're like, oh my God, they made the watches. I mean, if he's actually having people make the cases and make the bracelets and do all the machining here, I would definitely promote that as, on your website. I, I definitely would like to see that. Now, if it's just, you know, you're, you're getting cases from Switzerland and you're just assembling them all here, that's something different. If you're doing all the design here, that's something different. If you're actually manufacturing something here, I think that's kind of a big deal and then you should put that onto your website. But if you're not, then yeah, I wouldn't say you're making anything here aside from designing it. I, I picked everything, the colors, the designs, the movements, which people are going crazy, like quartz, quartz, how can you have a quartz? I said from the beginning, I'm not a watch guy. They said, do you want to wind the watch every day when you wake up or do you want it to work and be correct? I said, I want it to be worked correctly. So it's quartz. And by the way, this one, you have to wind it. I did one of each. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know a lot about watches, then maybe educate yourself a little bit. And I don't I want to sound smug when I say that. But like you're in the business, you're, you start a business about watches, maybe you research why people want mechanical movements, why they want quartz, what's the big deal with quartz and, and mechanical and everything in between chronographs and things like that. Understand what you're selling, that way you can actually price it correctly. But whatever, it's your business, I don't care, you're the millionaire. If you don't want to buy the watch, don't buy the watch. That's the good thing about America. I am not dragging you in gun to the head being like, you have to buy this watch. I'm not doing that. People are acting like I'm actually at, have a gun in your mouth and be like, buy the watch. No, no, no. <laughs> I love this guy. He's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And it's true. If you want it, buy it. If you don't want it, don't buy it. But Mr. Portnoy, uh, we do have the ability to review and give our own opinions as well. I mean, you can't just say, oh, you hate these people, these nerds, blah, 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 and not listen to them. I mean, you don't have to listen to them, but I mean, we're willing to say whatever we want to say. So while, yes, it's true, we, you, we don't have to buy them. We also don't have to say that the, the greatest thing, or we can also give our opinion to say, yeah, this watch is overpriced, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, Beck. People like you're drop shipping them. You know what I was going to ship them? From my house myself with handwritten cards in it. You should, you should do the handwritten card thing. I like that. Again, I'm just gonna leave it at this. You don't have to like the watches. You can complain about the watches. The price range is in the correct range. They're 15 to three grand probably for that quality of the watch. You put Rolex on it, it's fucking 10 grand. That's just a fact, all right? Now I don't have the watch in hand, so I can't really say yes or no. But I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, Shinola makes a great watch. That's what I would probably put you at a comp. I don't think you're going to have Rolex quality, especially not in the movement category. Uh, I mean, when your movement costs 40 bucks, like there's only so much machining that could go into a case. And from what I'm seeing on the website, it doesn't look like there's many facets, many uh, different finishing techniques, nothing special about it, like in terms of uh, materials used or anything like that. So I'm not sure if I would... I would, I would definitely say that comment's a stretch. I have one thing going for me in two decades, being honest. It's why despite takedown, hit piece, enemy, I'm still in here. Yeah, when it comes to uh, uh, that accusation of saying that he just bought these $40 watches from China and he's selling them for a crazy profit, I agree.
there's no way he did that. He designed these watches. He started this business. He wanted to make a good quality product. It might be a good quality product. I have no idea, but he had the right intention in mind. He's got a, the right heart with the Brick by Brick Foundation. It's great. I like it. It's just until I see the watch in hand, I'm not going to comment anymore. I just thought this video was funny and uh, and I just needed to make a, a commentary on it. Anyways, that's the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out one of these videos as well. If you like this style of content, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, do all the things. Follow me on Instagram. Get, let Dave know that I want to watch, want to get one of these watches in hand because I want to review it. For the love of God, please get in contact, get me in contact with Dave Portnoy. All right, guys, that's the video. I'll catch you guys later.